From filmmaker Adam Marcus comes the ninth installment in the infamous Friday the 13th franchise. Releasing for the first time beneath the banner of New Line Cinema rather than Paramount Pictures, this bizarre Jason Voorhees sequel features magical daggers, body jumping, slime-covered demon Jason slug monsters, a badass bounty hunter named Creighton Duke, excessive amounts of gross-out gore, and the epic return of Kane Hodder as Jason Voorhees. Let's take a look at Adam Marcus's 1993 supernatural slasher movie, the second film in the franchise to suggest being the final entry, Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. I've said this before and I'll say it again, but it remains mind-blowing to me that this turnaround even exists, especially considering how hard-headed I am regarding movies I simply do not like. I spent the better part of 25 years absolutely hating this movie, ever since the first time I saw it in theaters at the age of 6, well into my mid to late 20s, I didn't like the acting, the pacing, the story, the score, the characters, the magic stuff, the body jumping, etc, etc, etc. I mean, my list of dislikes was probably two stories tall. But, at the same time, I rented the movie continuously throughout the 90s, owned the DVD, bought a bootleg Blu-ray from eBay before its official Blu-ray release in the box set, bought the box set, and so on and so forth. The point is, although I hated the movie, at least I thought I did, I always found myself going out of my way to watch it. Then, suddenly in 2017-ish, a switch in my head just flipped, and I was overcome with the realization that I didn't hate Jason Goes to Hell at all, at least anymore. And not only did I not hate it, I loved it, seemingly suddenly, but maybe I always did and just spent the better part of three decades trying to convince myself otherwise. Whatever the reason is, I am fully on board and embrace the absolute nonsense of this movie at this point. Whether this realization is sincere or simply some kind of weird Stockholm Syndrome, Jason Goes to Hell is not afraid to be Jason Goes to Hell. Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, marks a notable departure from the traditional Friday the 13th formula. The film begins with an elaborate setup wherein Jason Voorhees is lured into an ambush by undercover agents, resulting in a massive explosion orchestrated by the FBI, seemingly ending the reign of the infamous Crystal Lake Killer. But the true horror begins when it's revealed that while Jason's body is dead, his evil spirit remains very much alive, and possesses the coroner upon being entranced by Jason's still-beating heart. This sets the stage for a series of body-hopping horrors as Jason's spirit moves from one host to the next, carrying out yet another vengeful rampage on his way back to Crystal Lake from the morgue. The plot thickens when it's revealed through bounty hunter Creighton Duke that Jason has a secret family residing within the Crystal Lake area and that the only thing that can truly kill the undead Jason Voorhees is another Voorhees. Jason's purpose then becomes twofold, to find a suitable female relative to be reborn through fully, and then to eliminate any and all remaining family members who might threaten him thereafter. Amidst the chaos... Jessica Voorhees learns of her lineage and the cursed magical dagger that can put an end to Jason's evil for good. The climactic finale sees multiple possessions, a series of intense battles, and the eventual confrontation between the Voorhees family members and Jason himself. 
the story culminates with not only Jason being dragged down into the depths of hell, but also a surprise teaser, linking the world of Jason Voorhees with another iconic horror legend, Freddy Krueger, setting the stage for future cinematic crossovers. After acquiring the rights to Jason Voorhees, but not the Friday the 13th title itself, New Line Cinema had every intention of finally pitting their own in-house slasher icon, Freddy Krueger, against the hockey-masked madman. But with the Freddy vs. Jason ideas being thrown around left and right, and the project still years and years away from being fully fleshed out, it became known rather quickly that the way to go with the character of Jason Voorhees was simply to make another Jason movie, without the backing support of his usually Friday the 13th namesake. Sean S. Cunningham returned to the franchise for the first time since the original film, this time solely as a producer. Adam Marcus, a young and upcoming director, was selected by Cunningham to helm the film, with the understanding that Jason's iconic hockey mask should be removed. While Cunningham refutes any claims of telling Marcus to abandon the mask, Marcus counters by saying he wasn't granted that level of creative autonomy. This could probably be chalked up to more a miscommunication snafu than either one of them lying about what happened. Adam Marcus was instructed to pretty much disregard, or at least ignore, the events of Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, and more so pick up sometime after the events of The New Blood. But obviously, no matter which way you look at it, Jason Goes to Hell, regarding any of the preceding films before it, has a number of plot inconsistencies and timeline inconsistencies that prevent it from ever truly feeling like a direct continuation of any of the specific entries, which I'm sure was on purpose in one way or the other. Initially, the film was to feature Elias Voorhees, this time acting as the brother of Jason Voorhees versus being his father, as was the original idea for the ending of Jason Lives. Why they were going to use the same name and turn him into Jason's sibling is beyond me, but it was this character who was going to be responsible for the film's murders. By first retrieving Jason's body from the lake, consuming his heart, and acquiring his mystical powers, and embarking on a killing spree similar to his brothers thereafter. The responsibility of turning Marcus's ideas into a screenplay fell to Jay Hughley. Marcus mentioned that he had intended for the character Stephen Freeman to be Tommy Jarvis from the fourth, fifth, and sixth parts, but due to licensing issues, Tommy couldn't be included. Hughley's screenplay draft was seen as convoluted and confusing. Consequently, Dean Laurie was hired by Cunningham to develop a new script from scratch within a week, emphasizing Jason as the primary character and abandoning the Elias Voorhees brother angle completely. One of Laurie's concepts placed Jason in the midst of a Los Angeles gang conflict, but time constraints rejected this idea. Despite his reservations about Laurie's script, Michael DeLuca from New Line Cinema approved the movie's production. As Laurie transitioned to another task, Leslie Bohem was brought in to refine the script. Later, Louis Abernathy contributed further adjustments to the opening segments of the film. It is worth noting, regarding Elias Voorhees, that he is briefly mentioned within Jason Goes to Hell as the father of Jason Voorhees, securing the name within canon, at least within the canon of The Final Friday, having only ever appeared prior to this film in the novelization of Jason Lives. Well, that makes me think of a little girl in a pink dress, sticking a hot dog through a donut. Jason Goes to Hell became Adam Marcus's inaugural feature. Fresh out of film school, Marcus was initially set to direct My Boyfriend's Back for Touchstone Pictures. However, due to his inexperience, Walt Disney Studios opted against employing him for the job. Being an avid fan of the Friday the 13th franchise, Marcus envisioned a storyline where Voorhees meets his end, early on, but re-emerges through other characters to sustain his reign of terror. Although similarities between this concept and the film, The Hidden, exist, Marcus clarifies that he had not watched The Hidden prior to making The Final Friday, and any resemblance is unintentional at best. 
Marcus aimed for a cliché-driven start to the movie, only to surprise audiences with Jason's early demise at the SWAT team's hands. The film's special effects were managed by Al Magliocchetti and the KMB Effects Studio. Magliocchetti joined the project after his KMB colleagues informed him about the production of the film. Tony Todd tried out for the part of Creighton Duke, but the role ultimately went to Stephen Williams. Although Adam Marcus and Dean Laurie favored Laurie Holden for the character of Jessica Kimball, Sean Cunningham had the final say and chose Carrie Keegan for the role. The production of the film kicked off on July 20th, 1992 in Los Angeles, California, with filming wrapping on September 4th of the same year, after several reshoots and additionally filmed scenes took place. Harry Manfredini, after being absent for the last two films, returned to the franchise as the composer for Jason Goes to Hell. Although there are cues and certain compositions that I do enjoy, there's an aspect about the music itself in general that just annoys me. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but I have a feeling that it's due to the all-synthesized sound of the music on display here. Typically, Manfredini would utilize real instruments and sometimes even an actual orchestra to fully realize his scores, but in Jason Goes to Hell, the music sounds like every single little thing came out of a late 80s, early 90s synthesizer which I guess can be charming when done right, but here, it just sounds too much like a keyboard versus an actual orchestra, similar to what Fred Mollen did with Part 7 and 8, but whereas I dug the score for Part 8, something about the score for The Final Friday sounds too synthetic. Now, I could be wrong about this entirely. Maybe he did have live instruments and an orchestra on the score. I'm not entirely sure because I couldn't find any literature on it, but nonetheless, the score definitely has that early 90s completely done on a keyboard sound to it. And again, while I like some of the work here, most of it just falls flat for me because of this. <laughs> Overall, I really enjoy Jason Goes to Hell these days, whether it's because I'm under some kind of weird movie Stockholm Syndrome spell, whether I've always liked the film and just never realized it, or I've simply grown to enjoy the film for what it is. That discussion is best left saved for its own separate video, but nonetheless, I dig Jason Goes to Hell. But on that note, the film is not without its issues. The body jumping is a big problem for me regarding the Jason Voorhees mythos, but I could overlook this aspect of taking the film in isolation, which you pretty much have to do regarding Jason Goes to Hell anyways, since it is more of a one-off than anything else. But on the body jumping note, none of the people who get possessed by Jason's spirit act how Jason acts, and they sometimes even talk. I get that this was due to the actors sort of wanting to do their own thing, but this aspect should have not been up for discussion. If you're being possessed by Jason Voorhees, act like Jason Voorhees acts. I'm also not a huge fan of the Magic Dagger, or the presence of the Evil Dead Book of the Dead, or the Voorhees extended family itself, as presented in this movie. Just a lot of extra needlessly supernatural convoluted stuff that feels more bloated than anything else. And what's the deal with the erotic shaving? I mean, what? The scene is hilariously weird, and definitely one of the most memorably WTF moments in the series, but I mean, what else can I say about it? With that said, there is a ton of stuff that I do love about the film. The kills are gory, the special effects are pretty great, I like most of the characters, and all of the actors do a pretty damn good job with the material. Creighton Duke is an absolute badass character that we definitely need more of. The lighting and cinematography showcase a very spooky atmosphere, and the final battle of the movie is pretty good, albeit a little clunky here and there. 
Jason literally being dragged down into hell at the end of this movie is a nice literal punctuation of the film's title as well, and it plays out as good as we could have hoped for from a movie as out there as this one. The final shot of Jason's mask being pulled under the sand by Freddy Krueger is a nice touch and definitely an iconic shot, and I understand the intention, but the fact that the laugh we hear isn't even Robert England's voice makes it feel a little lackluster for me. Regarding Jason's look in this movie, I do absolutely love it, and it's one of the few things I've unapologetically enjoyed about the movie since day one, one of the few positives I could say about the movie since first seeing it. He's dirty, filthy, absolutely rotten, somehow flesh-colored again after the rotten fish belly look he had in part 8. He's bloated, he's gross, he looks melted and mutated like some kind of weird toxic avenger madman. And I always chalked up his look to being melted by toxic waste at the end of Jason Takes Manhattan, although Adam Marcus has directly stated that this was not his intention. But you know what? If it works, we'll take it, right? I mean, to me, the toxic waste theory just makes more sense. But I absolutely dig the look of Jason here, especially considering his mask is like melted into his face. I mean, what's not to love about this look? I think it's absolutely iconic in the best way. And Kane Hodder, of course, kicks all kinds of ass in this movie as Jason once again, in the few parts we get to see of him as Jason, of course. Thankfully, though, this was not Jason's final outing after all, because we did get the epic Jason X down the road, as well as Freddy vs. Jason a year after that, plus the reboot a few years after that in 2009. Again, I love this film now. But there's no denying that Jason Goes to Hell is riddled with issues, but a lot of these issues help make the movie an even more bizarre sideshow than it would have been otherwise, and I think the legacy of the film is a lot more solidified now because of those issues, which is both hilarious and fascinating to me. How I went from hating this movie to loving it, the world may never know, but I will tell you this, Jason Goes to Hell is not afraid to be Jason Goes to Hell. With that said, Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, is worthy of a rewatch.